There are a ton of Assassin's Creed Mirage news coming from the recently released third dev diary fully focused on the city of Baghdad as the setting of the game and in this video we're going to discuss all of them, starting from the first look at the in-game map of Baghdad, its districts and the wilderness around it, some more news about two side activities that involve narrative and history, a deep dive on the historical characters and approach to the game and a lot of details that you might have missed when watching the dev diary. So let's not wait any longer and let's dive into our analysis of the third dev diary of Assassin's Creed Mirage. So the dev diary already starts with some new introduction shots of various areas of Baghdad and its daily life before we get to see the title of the dev diary which is Recreating a Lost City. We see a new shot of the city as narrative director Sarah Beaulieu describes Baghdad in the 9th century as one of the biggest and most advanced cities of the world, especially in terms of scientific discoveries, as the video shows several props from what is here defined as Ahmad's room from the House of Wisdom in the district of Abbasiyah. Now the House of Wisdom, we have discussed it already, was described by creative director Stéphane Boudon as the biggest library of that time, where scientists from all over the world debated and revised the scriptures and as we already mentioned in the past, it was visited multiple times by Basim in his early years. The House of Wisdom will be located in the Abbasiyah district of Baghdad which is going to be dedicated to science and knowledge and within this district, within the House of Wisdom, there is going to be a room called Ahmad's room which is likely going to be the room of Ahmad ibn Musa ibn Shakir who is one of the three Banu Musa, the three famous scholars and inventors of the time that we have frequently mentioned in our videos who actually historically worked within the House of Wisdom and then within the game are also going to be part of the Hidden Ones and are going to help Basim obtain and upgrade his assassin's tools. Back to the dev diary we see more of Baghdad, its colors and the NPCs walking around it before we have a look at the prototype version of the game which can be then compared with the more recent prototype and the final version of the game before we move on to a concept art of the ziggurat of Dur Gurigalzu, the ancient city founded in the 14th century BCE that we also mentioned in our past videos and whose ruins will be in the game. As historian Raphael Weyland discusses the historical sources used to build the city, we actually get to see a first look at the map of the game and there is so much to discuss already. For starters, this looks like the map is only half zoomed in, with the actual city of Baghdad and its four districts located in the eastern part of the map, while the remaining area to the west and a whole additional area to the north and even to the south maybe, does look like it's going to be the so-called wilderness area that the devs have already mentioned in the past and to be honest, it is way more than I expected in terms of size of the map beyond the city itself. Very recently, Ubisoft Japan also shared the physical map of Baghdad and the surrounding areas that will be a collectible contained within the launch edition of the game that is available on the Amazon stores and through this map, which again is a collectible and doesn't necessarily represent the scope of the map in game, we can still have a rough idea of how big the in-game map is going to be. Also, the collectible map contains the names of several locations that are likely going to end up in the game, such as Madinat as Salam, which means City of Peace and was the official name of Baghdad during the Abbasid times, the Abbasia, Harbiya, and Kark districts that we are going to see later, a whole area to the south called Jariaria, I'm not quite sure, I'm going to need your help with that, an area on the east beyond the Tigris River that doesn't seem to be available in the English map and another whole area to the northwest with the ruins of Dur Gurigalzu that we mentioned earlier and the small town of Anbar that has already been confirmed to be in the game. And of course the Hidden Ones Fortress of Alamut which we're going to discuss later. But back to the map of the city, we can see the four districts, each with its relevant landmarks and palaces, the icons of the traditional viewpoints that allow us to unveil the map and the various opportunities, the assassin's icon which I'd imagine is the location of the bureaus within the districts, and this other icon with a question mark which could be another point of interest or a quest marker. 
On the right side of the screen, we see our classic tab indicating the main information about the activities in the selected district. Here we are seeing the district of Abasia and the suggested rank to enter it, cause remember, there aren't any power or level indicators in the game, but players are going to gain ranks within the Brotherhood and those are going to be our new pointer to know if an area might be too tough, even though we'll be able to roam around the city freely anyway. The tab also shows the various collectibles and activities to complete, some of which are undiscovered while others are displayed, such as the chests containing gear and outfits, the so-called Dervis's artifacts, I'd imagine Dervis might be a recurring character in the game, and the historical sites which are going to be part of the history of Baghdad part of our database, which is going to be pretty much the text and pictures based discovery tour version of Mirage, as we'll see later. The dev diary shows how each district will have a distinct look, first by showing the various doors to the Hidden Ones bureaus of each district considering the Hidden Ones logo over them, and then by discussing what players can find in them. Abbasia, as we mentioned, is going to be the cultural district of the city where scientists of all kinds are gathered to share their knowledge and here we see a brief cutscene showcasing Fazil Fahim al Kemsa, a character presented here as the quote-unquote first scholar of the House of Wisdom. Then there's Kark, the market district, which brings heavy vibes from the market areas of Assassin's Creed 1 and Revelations. Then we move on to the industrial district of Harbiya, the darker and poorer part of the city, but this is also where the dev diary for a brief moment shows the fully zoomed in map which looks pretty nice. It's actually a half 3D, half isometric view of the city which contains several more icons here like I'm going on wild guesses here, a wanted poster, a musical note, I wonder what that might be, a social stealth opportunity, a landmark slash palace, a merchant slash store, a weapon vendor or a fighting opportunity of some kind, an outfit vendor, the Hidden Ones Bureau and one of the landmarks for the History of Baghdad database and once the map moves we can also see an icon for a chest or more likely a gear chest. But that's not all, as the tab for the Harbiya district here also mentions the existence of the so-called mysterious shards, some collectibles for sure which seem to be pretty rare and I wonder what kind of narrative meaning they might have. Finally, the dev diary focuses on the final and richest district, the Round City, which is going to host lush gardens and fountains and of course the Caliphal Palace that will act as a seat of power of the Caliph. The dev diary also has a very interesting rendition of how the lighting in the game can change the perspective of the city and the game world in general and make the game more immersive. And while discussing this, creative director Stefan Boudon even mentions that while roaming the city and especially when getting close to a mosque, players will also be able to hear the Adhan, that is the Muslim call to prayer. The dev diary then moves on to discuss historical authenticity in Mirage and to show the various characters that can be found in the game, like Ali ibn Muhammad, the leader of the Zanj Rebellion, a new concept for Fazil, the scholar that we saw earlier, and the Banu Musa, whom we also mentioned earlier, and while discussing them, the video shows an astrolab, an astronomical instrument that worked as a physical model of a star chart, but also had astrological and religious functions, and kudos to AC Land marks for mentioning that another astrolabe could also be seen in Assassin's Creed Origins. Moving on, Whalen also discusses the so-called Tales of Baghdad, which I'd imagine to be the world events of the game. They are described as short narrative side quests focused on cultural topics connected to the historical setting of the game, like literature or astronomy, once again with the astrolabe coming into play, or even religion I'd imagine, as here we can also see a small dialogue between Basim and a monk from abroad, possibly a Christian monk, who is looking for a quote unquote holy man buried in one of the nearby graves, but he can't read Arabic and thus can't read the epitaphs on the graves, hence why he needs Basim's help. Wayland also discusses more in depth the history of Baghdad feature as we see Basim unlocking the database entry for the bazaar in the game. Like I said, History of Baghdad is going to be a compact version of the Discovery Tour mode from the recent AC games, but in the shape of the Codex database from the original games, minus the snarky comments by Sean Hastings. Through the various landmarks, players will get to know more about 9th century Baghdad, its people and culture and eventually, by completing its database, they will also obtain a reward. 
As Baghdad was a crossroads for trade and cultures, this will also be reflected in the people that players will find in the city with a diversity of ethnicities and origins so the devs are encouraging to not only parkour over the rooftops but also to walk among the NPCs if only to also test the social stealth mechanics that the game provides. But as we saw, Baghdad is not the only area in the game's map, and as senior concept artist Edouard Noisette explains, the wilderness area will provide several different types of biomes and land to explore. And of course, the other area that can be explored is, well, not the fortress of Alamut, because that's not explorable, but a quote-unquote home base of the assassins set at the bottom of the fortress of Alamut. I'm not too sure I like that description because I do feel it's a missed opportunity to not visit the fortress, but at least here we can see a first look at the Hidden One's settlement in Alamut. And finally, the Dev Diary focuses on players and fans from the Arabic world who, according to creative director Stefan Boudon, have reacted enthusiastically to the announcement and news shared about the game before the video ends by showing more devs at work along with more new shots of Baghdad in the game. And to be honest, I am also pretty enthusiastic about the various news that have been shared about Mirage over the last few weeks and months as we've been marching on towards the new release date of the game on October the 5th. And especially the dev diaries which have shown and shared so much about the game, its characters and content and that we have analyzed in dedicated videos like the one you are seeing on screen right now. Thanks for watching, a huge thanks to the members of our channel and a shout out to our ATA insiders that are supporting the channel ever so strongly and I'll see you all in our next video.